the ushers will direct you uh, where to go. <coughs> the ushers will direct you uh, where to go. Let me, let me just share this as we, they, they prepare everything. You can put mine up here. You can go and do it. I know, you know, sometimes we, the weather and stuff, we stay home. <coughs> I just catch it on YouTube or Periscope or we get the CD. You can't get that. I can't lay hands on you over the internet. We prepare, we, you know, we, we have, that we pr praise God for that. That's available for our, you know, uh, long distance members. Praise God for them. But Amarillo's here. <laughs> Lubbock. Wolfers here. <clears throat> and there's some impartation you can't get online. The Apostle Paul said, I long to see you that I may impart some spiritual blessings to you that you may be established. There'd be some strengthening in you. That I couldn't have did through a letter. There was even another time he was writing to them, and he said, boy, I'm praying diligently that, that God would allow me out of these chains so I could come and see you so that I could complete what is lacking in your faith. And I stopped. I said, Holy Spirit, if he knew something was lacking in their faith, and apart from faith, you can't please God. I mean, why? Why would he not write it to him? He said, because you can't write this stuff. It's an impartation. Last Sunday, it was, you know, gifts of tongues, interpretation, just all kinds of impartation last Sunday. And, 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 and Ms. Rebecca said, Pastor, you want me to put that on YouTube? I said, nope, that was impartation. Somebody would have just watched that and not, they wouldn't have been able to get it. That was something I got, I got to see. And so I'm going to share this testimony. I'm not going to share the name because you'll see why. But I had to share this testimony because it, it's so powerful. And you, you're going to feel. You're going to feel it. I got it, And I love these. She said, hello, Pastor, First Lady. I want you guys to know that I'm so grateful for you both and so honored to be part of such an anointed ministry. I have battled with depression for about seven years off and on due to an unhealthy marriage that I have tried to force to keep together. And after being cheated on, abused, mistreated, God sent me to FCF to be healed, delivered, and restored. And even after nine years of being at another ministry, being prayed for time and time again, I would leave the same, still hurt still broken but Sunday at church I just leaned over and told a friend my heart is still broken after all these years and then you called out a broken heart and within seconds of me saying it I just want you to know after you laid hands on me I literally felt that burden lift from my chest and my life has not been the same Hallelujah. I am walking in freedom and God has restored my joy. Thank y'all for being sensitive to the voice of God. I know God personally, but I know he is definitely in this place. Amen. To God be the glory for all the things that he has done through you guys. I love you all. And I, let me read my response in because she responded again. I put, oh my goodness. As I read this message, the spirit of God saturated me. I know this is genuine and the work he did in you Sunday was so real. But of course, you know that, but wow. Thank you so much for sharing this with me. I know you didn't have to, but I'm so encouraged by this. And it continues to give me more passion as I see and hear results like this in the people that God has drawn to FCF. And she responded, yes, sir. I wanted to share this testimony, but I didn't know how to put it into words. Because now my worship comes from a true place of thank you, Jesus, instead of please help me, Jesus. Hallelujah. 
See, I didn't want to share her name because she mentioned another ministry. And, and now you may know where she comes from. And, and, and you, you will never make your candle shine brighter by blowing out somebody else's. And so I don't want another ministry to be looked down on in this city. Does it make sense? You will never make your candle shine brighter just because you blow out somebody else's. That Just because you make someone else look bad, that's not going to make you look better. But I know what we have here at FCF. I know it's real. I know it's powerful, man. And as we get ready to partake in communion, the Bible says, it, it, uh, as often as you eat this bread, as often as you drink this cup, you show the Lord's death till he comes. That word show, it means you proclaim, you declare, you preach Jesus' death until he comes. Everything that took place at the cross, everything that was paid for at the cross, you are preaching it every time you partake in the Lord's communion. You're letting them know, devil, I was healed. I was strengthened. I'm made new. I'm made whole. I was made into a conqueror. I was taken out of a place of a victim and placed into a place of a victor. From this day forward, I want you to know your life will never be the same. And you take this communion, man. There's power in communion. Preaching, I'm declaring the Lord's death. Jesus died for me. You will not be an addict no more. All chains of addiction will be broken off your life. Are you hearing this? Every chain of addiction, bondage of addiction, whatever it may be, broken off your life. Hallelujah. I'm giving your word. Now it's up to you. You're going to receive it. And the next time the enemy try and seduce you with that addiction, you can, no, uh-uh. What's today? May 1st. May 1st. Nope. The Lord said through pastor. You're broken. You can't have me. I belong to him. Hallelujah. Ushers, you may direct the people. If you will just receive the sacraments, go back to your seat, and then we'll partake together. Hallelujah. Before we partake, let me just say, I would hate to see what my life would have been like without him. I would hate to have seen that, right? He took the bread, gave thanks. And he broke it and said, take this and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do as often as you drink it 
in remembrance of me. Hallelujah. If you can just pass those to the aisles towards the center, and the ushers will gladly come and pick those up from you. And then you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. As as everyone gets situated, I got I got some. We had uh, we had a new uh, guest, sweetheart, that became a member who started by watching us on YouTube. Yeah, she showed up. Her name is Susan. Her name is Susan. Uh, Miss Rebecca. Is Rebecca. She yeah, she you had told her she'd been watching, and. Uh, and she she uh, showed up and also became a member. Uh, we, did we record the morning service? We're gonna have to put both of them online. I think we're gonna have two different services this morning. I received some. Oh, boy, you're just a handsome little thing. <laughs> Who's your dad? <laughs> Who's your daddy? <laughs> my baby. My baby. Hey, how many of y'all been loving on your kids more? Okay, now hold on. Kids, how many have your parents been loving you more? Oh, you get one clap, one clap. A while ago I said parents have been loving you. Oh, yeah, yes, amen. Kids, they've been loving you? <laughs> Pastor, look at my face. And then the mom pinched. You better say amen. Amen. <laughs> amen. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, but, uh, Dr. D, did they talk to you? Okay. We need someone, or if y'all know someone, we have a gentleman that's been watching online. But he does not hear yet. Oh, y'all didn't hear me. Y'all didn't hear me. He does not hear yet. And so he only uh, sign language. And so he's wanting to visit, but we need someone that can do sign language. So he can, he wants to attend service here. And so if y'all know someone that is fluent in sign language, I don't know if that would be the right uh, terminology, uh, but someone that is if, if, huh? proficient. Jeez, all these big words, I like it. That is <laughs> proficient at uh, sign language. Have them call the office, and we can get get with them and uh, see if we can get them here and and get the communication process going. So, and this gentleman would like to be here. Isn't that amazing? Wow. I'm excited. Uh, I guess he reads lips. Why can't he just read my lips then? Oh, I move too much. So this ain't a tennis match. Yeah, because sometimes I'll go up, you know, on the, so you be like, Praise the Lord. I, 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 uh, even though I, I, I highly enjoyed and loved Peyton Manning's style of football, I'm not a in-the-pocket kind of quarterback. I got to get out the pocket and I got to run around a little bit. Amen. Best quarterback ever played the game. Y'all better say Amen. Let's get into the word. Y'all need to get spiritual. Y'all are in the flesh. No, I'm just, I'm just kidding, man. I'm kidding. I'm just, I'm just having some fun. Well, I tell y'all, this morning service, uh, powerful, powerful. But they're gonna miss out on this because I'm not gonna preach this to them next week. So they both gonna have to go online. But 
I want to talk about divine favor for a divine assignment. Divine favor for a divine assignment. Now, we're going to actually look at, at some things that transpired when you got saved. Jesus, man. We're going to, and oh, oh, just in case, those of you, I, boy, the Holy Spirit got you. We pray that prayer. You got saved. Pastor, you set me up. I didn't do it. The Holy Ghost did. Holy Ghost set you up. <laughs> he got you saved, man. But so I want you, we're actually going to see what happened. We're going to see some things that need to take place. Uh, we're going to, boy, I mean, some theologians might argue with me, but I love the word. And there's no denying or going around the word. Thank you for your enthusiasm about the word. Amen. I love the word. And, and I was sharing with this one gentleman, the word hadn't led me astray yet, and I have a feeling it won't begin to either. I got saved July 20th, 2001. Absolutely. Woo, thank you. What day did you get saved, Ezra? Oh, Jesus. Come on. Frank, when did you get saved? Oh, Jesus. Daniel, what day did you get saved? Oh, Lord. Listen, I can, okay, okay. What day did you meet your wife? Reggie. Oh, I'm putting you on the spot today. Y'all on the spot. I'm putting y'all under the, who? No, Lord. 97. That's the year I graduated. What day did you meet your wife? I'm going to have to have some marriage classes. I met my wife March 29th, 1998. Yes, I did. That's when we started dating. That's when we started dating. That's when we started, okay. I started dating. I'm sorry. When did you start dating your wife, your husband? Dating. Huh? You don't know? Who knows when you started dating? You know. You know. You know. You know. You know. You know. Oh, 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 okay. She knows for both of us. I got it. I got it. She knows for both of us. You know? When did y'all start dating? January 18th. What, where's that noise coming from? 1989. You're going to see if she knows. Do you know when y'all started dating? <laughs> I started dating my wife March 29th, 1998. Yeah. You know that? No, did, no, oh, because I tell you. <laughs> well, that, that met you, but I, we started dating a little bit after that. Where did we meet? Okay. Where did we have our first kiss? Okay. What color was your toenail polish? <laughs> Who? What is coral? Coral is like green. <laughs> the coral in the ocean is like, what color was it? Okay, 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 okay. You're good. Oh, okay, okay. But see, you, but, but what I'm saying is, see, I know the date. I met this person or came into a relationship with this. The day I came into a relationship with, oh, no, I know that date. The day he saved me. The day he raised me up from the, no, I know that date. July 20th, 2001. I remember that. I remember that Sunday. You remember the day you got saved? What day did you get saved? Y'all, you're a cheater. Because you did the first day of our service. That's all good. Ah, what a day, right? That's not fair. Now, you're not a cheater. You're not a cheater, but that's not fair. <laughs> February 15th, 2009, the day FCF was born is the day he got born again. Wow. Amen. And so, uh, so, and so th there's, there's no way I'm not going to know. I mean, it's just me, just me. Anyways, 
I don't even know why I said that. Romans chapter 5. I am excited for today. Romans chapter 5. But yeah, you need to look back. When did I get saved? Holy Spirit, help me. Go back, man. Look at that. You remember what service it was or something. Uh, maybe you got saved. Someone introduced them to you at the supermarket. I don't know. But you need to. Uh, that's a special day. That's a special day. Your anniversary, that's a special day. I know Lee and Leonard are fixing to celebrate three years of holy matrimony. <laughs> Tuesday. Yeah. How many of you that are married before said, I'll never get married? <laughs> <laughs> Look at your spouse and yeah, you I got you. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. All right, Romans chapter 5. Divine favor for divine assignment. Why, well, the first day I saw my wife, I knew I was going to marry her. My best friend, Esteban. Remember Esteban Diaz? He said, oh, she won't date you. I said, watch, bro, I'm going to marry that girl. She won't even date you. So you watch. Huh? Yeah, yeah, he said he, she wouldn't date me. Said, I don't know if I'm going to date her. I'm going to marry that girl. Are you not the luckiest man alive? Glory to God. Blessed too. <laughs> Say something about me. <laughs> man. Let, forget it. Let's go to the word. I'm, Matt, Romans chapter 5. Romans. <laughs> How you feeling? Better? I was, that, that black mass is gone. That tumor is gone. You're healed in the name of Jesus. Amen. Romans chapter 5, verse 10 and 11. When, now, this one say, come on, say this. I have, I have divine favor because, because, okay, hold on, wait a minute, because see, some of y'all were, well, God, okay, look, everyone in here just got saved, right? Iris, you're saved. My boy Chris, you're saved. Amen? I like you, man. Who, who's my other one? Okay, Rick, oh, but he got reded, uh, rededicated. Amy, there you are. Amy, saved. So now all of you, you have a divine assignment. Just like all of us have one. Everyone in the 9 o'clock service, they got divine assignment. But, so there is a divine favor that comes on my life because I have a divine assignment. Okay? Ladies, don't pick. That's my, that's my niece. So, we, we, were, we were at... We were at uh, her house yesterday, and, and my, my goddaughter, my niece, <laughs> these girls, she said, she said, what did you tell her about how she was going to have to sit because of her dress? Because it was like a like a eighth grade kind of prom kind of thing. She was going to high school, so they had this little, and she had this little, what, what is it? It looks like a tutu kind of thing, like a dress, but a formal dress. And what did you tell her? You're going to have to watch how you sit. She said, oh, I got shorts on. I said, girl, you better. <laughs> That's fine, but learn to be a lady. <laughs> Leonard, my son, ah, I got shorts on. <laughs> Pretty little thing, but it's like. <laughs> All right. When we were enemies of God. We were reconciled to God by the death of his son. Now listen, watch this. Much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life, right? So I was reconciled by God. I was reconciled. Now this word, now watch this in the Greek. One of the words, okay, it's of course reconciled, but to change mutually. A change really, watch this, in our relationship begins to take place. There is a mutual change that took place in how 
uh, uh, we're going to now respond and relate to each other. Because before I was responding to him as an enemy. Oh, Jesus. And so he, had, he still loved me, but I was still an enemy. Oh, y'all, oh, y'all. So when you got saved, a mutual change took place. My goodness. I went from being his enemy to his son. Or if you're a female, his daughter. Amen. Amen. There was a mutual change took place. And we shall be saved by his life. Now, so I'm saved. So right here, he's talking about your eternal life. Right here. We shall be saved by his. I am saved. I have eternal life by his life. Right? I have. Come on, say that. I have eternal life by his life. Now, now watch this. And I love this next verse. Verse 11. And not only so, in other words, not only that, but we also joy in God through Jesus by whom we have received the atonement or reconciliation. Okay? Now, this word is different in the Greek. I love this. Glory to God. Because if I want you to leave knowing this, because it's going to help you walk in more faith. Uh, it's going to help you walk in more confidence. Okay? Okay? I said okay? So I'm going to read it with the definition. So not only that, so, so th this is what I'm saying, because I, I don't want you, he said not only that, not only are you saved, not only did you get eternal life by his life, not only did you get eternal life by his life, but we're also joy in God. Come on, y'all know how to be joyful? Amen. Smile. There you go. I am happy. Well, tell your face. Amen. Why'd you look at Randy? <laughs> Why'd you look at Randy? She said, wait till we get home. <laughs> Show you how joyful I am. Okay, okay, so, so we also join in God through Jesus by whom we have received restoration to divine favor. My goodness. That's the definition of atonement, of reconciliation, because you'll either, in New King James, you'll see reconciliation. In King James, you're going to see atonement. That word is a restoration to divine favor. My goodness. Come on. He's restored you to divine favor. Come on. Say that. I have been restored to divine favor. So everyone that just got saved, everyone that rededicated your life from today, and all of us that already, our life has been restored to divine favor. Come on. I have divine favor all my life. Everything God calls me to do, leads me to do. I have a divine favor working in my life. I'm not doing this by myself. I'll never do life alone by myself. I have a divine favor to help me live life. The head and not the tail. Above only and never beneath. I got divine favor. I got divine favor. Hit your neighbor on the shoulder and tell him, I got divine favor. I got divine favor. Slap him on the shoulder. Just backhand him on the shoulder. I got divine favor. I don't know if you know that. I don't know if you know that. <laughs> I receive. I receive. Merry Christmas. Sir? Sir? Oh, you, oh yes, yes, yes. Oh, he said, Merry Christmas. I said, my wife. My wife, this I received. I told her this morning. I said, "Babe, I apologize. I don't have my jacket. I was putting my my handkerchief, and I went to put it in. Well, it didn't have the stitches unstitched, so I went to pull it out, and I ripped the pocket. I said, "Oh man!" But before that, I said, "Babe, I said, babe, uh, she she hadn't even looked at what I was about to wear. I said, "Babe, uh, will this look good?" She said, "Honey, whatever you wear is gonna look good." I said, "Oh, sooky, sooky now." 
I said, hold on, wait, you hadn't looked at it. I said, no, really, it's just going to look good. And she said, well, those are Christmas colors. You're going to look Christmassy. I said, well, I'm about Christ, so that's what I'm going to wear. Praise the Lord. So I told, I told the first service, when y'all see first lady around me, uh, tell me Merry Christmas. And she's going to be like, see, I told you. I told him to say that. So, so come on, there's a divine favor. On, see, I need, see, I need you to know that so, because you've had more faith for negative stuff than you had for favor. Come on, come on, tell me. Since bad stuff happened, I knew that was going to happen. According to your faith, so shall it be. But for, for when you walk out of here, you know there's a divine favor on my life because I have an assignment on my life. And so I'm leaving here with a divine favor. Why? I'm saved. Amen. Jesus. Amen. Come on. Someone say, I got divine favor. I got divine favor. Come on. Now, now see, not just any favor. Divine, David. Divine favor. This is a heavenly favor. Whoa, Jesus. Amen. Amen. A divine favor is on your life. And, 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 and it will cause your house note to be cut in half. Huh? She said they had about six years, and that they called me with a praise report. Now they got less than three years. Hallelujah. And the mortgage payment went down, and the lady didn't have to do that. She could have been shady, but the Holy Spirit convicted her. She said, uh-uh, you call them, and you, <laughs> someone shout divine favor. Come on, someone say, I'll take some of that. Yeah, no, divine favor on your life because you got an assignment. Who, who was I praying for? Was it this morning or yesterday? The Holy Spirit had me interceding for one of you. And I said, Lord, they, 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 have, they ain't got time to be dealing with this. They got an assignment on their life. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, help them uh, through this because they, they don't have time to deal with this. I think it was you, Mom. I think it was you I was praying for the other morning. I said, Lord, she's got an assignment on her life. She don't have time to be dealing with her household unsaved. You promised her her household would be saved. And so, Lord, in the name of Jesus, help, help this situation that she'll have to be dealing with this. Dealing with this another day in her life. I call her household saved in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. See, now watch, a favor is going to start working. Whoa, Jesus, man. Okay, let me get to the word. And so, uh, Romans, you're going to find, uh, is a wonderful picture of grace. Huh? Uh, is a wonderful picture of grace. And, and our response to his grace, our response to this divine favor that I really didn't deserve in the first place. Amen? Uh, and so, uh, open your Bible. I'm, I'm, I'm going to kind of just go through this. But I, I, need, I need to kind of fix some thinking. Oh, look, is Melly here? She had to work. She brought, she had been looking for them because she wanted to bring them. Remember when Melly shared the testimony where God set her free from depression and anxiety? She found the pills. It's like Zoloft, right? She got, they told her, don't, don't stop taking them or you will, what? You'll get real sick. And she quit taking them. She didn't get sick. How do you pull, huh? How do you do this? I'll get it up. Because I told them, not everybody, you know, golly, yeah. That girl got set free. She'll have, she got set free. It even tells you what day to take it, in case you don't know it's Monday. Yeah, it's got the date. I, I told the first service, I said, we'll just take the, throw away the pills so that way in case, you 
you know, because, you know, everyone that comes to church ain't free. That's why they came, so they could get set free. And she was so excited. Pastor, I wanted to put them on the altar myself. God set me free. Amen. And so Romans is a wonderful picture of grace and our response. But see, what happens, what happens is sometimes we can get fed or taught or have the wrong picture about what grace is. And so if I have the wrong understanding about grace, I might respond to his grace in an unworthy manner. Okay? Uh, what, what happens a lot is, is, is uh, I've heard people make it seem like if you have to do anything, then it wasn't a gift. Anyone ever heard that? It's law. No. No, 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 no. See, just because you were given a gift doesn't mean you received it. Let me help you, though. See, because uh, it don't, it, well, even just because you say you received it doesn't mean you received it. Jesus, man. You see, there, the problem is. What many people do, okay, this ring, th my ministerial ring was a gift. This was a gift. So, uh, uh, they gave it to me. And so what a lot of uh, people and even some teachers will do is they will compare your gift of salvation to this kind of a gift. Or what has someone given you? Do you have something that someone has given you? They, someone gave you that journal. They'll, they'll compare it to this kind of a gift. Some kind of a material gift that somebody wrapped, they will compare the gift of salvation that came in Jesus, my goodness, and compare it to some material gift that will eventually wither or be worthless or, I mean, it will, it, will, it will be one day in the trash, one day I'll forget about. Come on, talk to me. How many know there's no way you can compare a natural gift to this gift of salvation that came in he, Jesus? Come on, come on. You know you can't compare them to. And so, listen, listen to this. Because, see, there is a, see, when, when you, my goodness, I'm getting excited. I'm trying to calm down. I got to teach this, Heather. When you receive, when you properly receive the gift of him, Jesus. Who is Jesus? Huh? The light of the world. Oh, I'm getting ahead. Of, I'm getting real ahead of myself, sweetheart. I got to calm down. Come on, y'all stretch your hand out towards me and say, Lord, help my pastor to calm down in Jesus' name. I got, I got to calm down because I got to teach this out because I need you to see this. Because, you see, there is, see, when there, there is a response of his work in our life that comes from properly honoring or receiving his gift. There is a response. There is a response that flows out of my life that begins to work in me. When I open this gift, in other words, let, let, let me break it down to this, and I'll give you all the scriptures in a minute, but let me just break it down to you. The moment you got saved, glory to God, the moment you got saved, oh, Jesus, okay, I'm going to get there, I'm going to get there, I'm going to get there. Has anybody, okay, okay, the moment you got saved, and you opened this gift of Jesus, are you ready for this? There was a booby trap for your old man. There was a booby trap for your old desires. For your old flesh. For that sinful lust. I wish I was talking to somebody that saved in here today. Uh, and it was like, okay, I'm talking about the ones that really, oh, nah, I'm saved. Okay, no, no, okay, but there's got to be some evidence. Yes, that the light of the world is in me. 
I'm going I'm to break it down with all the scriptures that you'll need in a second. But just let me talk to you. For, can I talk to you for a minute? Ha, has anybody seen that movie, Law Abiding Citizen? You seen that movie, Law Abiding Citizen? That's a bad movie, isn't it? Man. And, 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 and that guy, that judge, uh, she said, I'm a judge. I can pretty much do whatever I please. And her phone rings. And she answers the cell phone. And she puts it to her ear. Poof! I mean, just a gunshot goes off in her. And she's laying on the floor dead. Huh? Can I tell you something? That's what happened. You got saved. You, you opened your gift. And pop! He shot that old man. Them old desires. And then all of a sudden you're like, why do I not want to do these things that I used to love doing? What, what, what happened here? I used to enjoy Drinking, and then you tried drinking, like, wait a minute, this ain't the same. You, you tried smoking again, but it just didn't taste the same. It almost made you sick. Anybody been there? Yes, Some of the things that you try is my mic, is my mic, oh, no, okay, it's on. <laughs> uh, and and, and they, they said, they talked about this man. Yo, who, who's seen the, raise your hand if you've seen that movie. Law Abiding Citizen, y'all, seen, y'all need to see that movie, it's a good movie. And he said, the, the, the man said, he said, this guy, he figured out. They're like, how, how is he doing this? He's in prison. They're like, man, he said, he figured out how to kill you and not be in the same room. <laughs> God figured out. I could not understand it. See, me and my uncle, we used to, 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 to party and do all these things together. And he got saved before me. And I wanted to stop, but I couldn't. And I told him, I said, Theo, how did you do it? He said, I got saved. I said, no, no, no. I said, look, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not bashing what you believe because I want what you have. But I don't understand. How is it that you got saved by just saying this little prayer? How is it that you got the, the desire to do these drugs that we've been doing, and you've been doing longer than, than me, longer than me. How is it that you, they didn't give you like a drink that you drank? They didn't give you a pill? He was like, no, I, I don't understand. See, because God figured out a way to do some things in my life that I couldn't do. I don't need to understand it. I just got to know that there's a divine favor working on my behalf. To help me overcome some things I haven't been able to overcome. To help me win in some areas I haven't been able to win in. Someone shout, I got the bond favor. Okay, so now let me show you this. Let, let, let me break this down for you. Let me, can I break this down for you? Okay, I got 17 minutes. Let me skip some stuff and let me go to this. Go to Romans 6. and Romans 6. Romans 6. Uh, because I want you to see this. Because I, I need you to understand this. Uh. Romans 6, verse 1 and 2, what shall we, I'm reading, I think, I think out of the New King James, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Certainly not. How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? Okay, wait a minute. If you got saved, then you died to sin. If you really got, okay, if, okay, no, well, I believe, but see, but, uh, Jesus, there is a response that comes out of me. That some places that I used to go, I'm not going to go. Some things I used to buy, I'm not, I'm not. And so sometimes they'll come looking for you. And, 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 and here's, here's how you know it, it, the Holy Ghost working in you, is you, you do it. Huh? You want to been there? You do it anyway. You know you got saved. You know something happened. But then all of a sudden you say, wait a minute. Why? Get this up. I, I'm not lying. I remember one day, I just got saved, and my, and, and my friend showed up with a big old bag of sticky icky icky. And he's like, man, this will help your pain. You know, because I was in pain. I had a crane ball just fell on me. You know, all my skin scraped off. I had a hole in my side, broken ribs. I had eternal bleeding. I mean, you know, I'm in, I'm in some pain. 
this will help the pain. Okay, you know, stupid. I took one hit, and I was like, get it off. Oh, this is nasty. I mean, no, no, I used to be in love with Mary Jane. I was one of them, I'm going to smoke till I die. Come on, anyone ever been there? James, look, look at my man James. I'm going to, you know, just, I'm going to smoke till I die. Lie till I die. Hey, you know. Na, 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 na. And make them say, uh. And, man, look, 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 look. You were like that, Nikki? Oh, you, okay, okay. <laughs> And and I took and I and, and listen, watch this. Now look, look, I wasn't judging him. But I took that hit and I was watching him hit. And I started getting grossed out. And I was like, just leave my mama's house. I was staying at your house that day. <laughs> Let me come over here. Let me come over here. Leave my mama's house. Just just leave. And I was like, Lord, forgive me, but I gotta lie. Hey, bro, I don't feel good, man. Uh, I think I'm going to go to sleep. Hey, uh, just go ahead, man. Just take off. I just want, I was just praying, Lord, take this off of me. Get this away from me. I, see, there is Jesus, man. There, something, so come on, someone say, there's a divine favor working in me right now. So what shall we say then? Are we going to continue in sin so that grace may abound? Absolutely not. How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? Somebody shout, you've been shot. You've been shot. You were booby-trapped, you were booby-trapped. By, the by the Holy Ghost. Come on, some took, come on, you got to know. Some, see, and so, let me, let me keep going. I'm going to get ahead of myself. See, let me, show, let me show you what I'm saying. Let me show you what I'm saying. James chapter 4, verse 9, real quick. James chapter 4, verse 9. I didn't understand this. I mean, but see, see come on, there, there's a response that takes place for someone that really got saved. See, because th- you should be able to see the light. I'm going to give it to you a minute. You should be able to see some light in me once I receive the light of the world. Uh, did you go to James chapter 4, verse 9? Be a- now, now what? Th- this one kind of got me. I was like, who's being gonna- Be afflicted. Mourn. Weep. I thought you were trying to get me out of all that. Let your laughter be turned to mourning, huh? Your joy be turned to heaviness. What? I thought you were trying to get me away from that. And the Holy Spirit, I I, I began to pray about this. He said, he said, no, listen. All the laughter that you used to find in the world. Let that be turned to mourning. All the joy. You used to get from sin. Let that turn to heaviness. That that begins to turn to, come on, come on, someone say, Lord. Lord. Everything. Everything. All the laughter. laughter. I found from the world. world. From sin. sin. Let it turn. turn. To mourning. mourning. All the joy. joy. I found in sin. sin. Let it turn to heaviness. heaviness. Say, you never be careful what you pray for. No, I'm no, I'm serious. You see, you see, when 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 you really honored this gift of Jesus, something snaps on the inside of you, and the things you used to do that didn't please Him, the next time you try doing it, it ain't fun anymore. Huh? It's not enjoyable anymore. Because, see, the, now I got saved for a divine assignment. And so now there's a divine favor working on my behalf. And he's trying to keep me from all these things because the Bible says the wisdom of God is first pure, then pe- peaceable. And, see, in order for me to hear the voice of the Lord and what I need to do and where I need to go, even things I need to say, I'm going to need this wisdom. And see, let, 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 I'm, I'm, oh, glory to God. And so, watch this. Romans 4, verse, Romans 6, verse 4 and 5. It says, even so, we should walk. I'm starting in the middle of verse 4. Romans 4, verse, uh, Romans 6, verse 4 through 5. 
even so, we also should walk in newness of life. Come on, look, look, look. look. We've been buried with him by baptism into death. You see, because I'm tired. Hold on, I'm tired. Okay, I, why are you preaching this, Pastor? I'm starting from the beginning, your salvation. Okay, we're going to work through this. We're going to deal with faith. We're going to do it. But I'm tired of people making it, making it seem like Jesus came so you can sin. I'm tired of that. He, he didn't die, give his life, so you and I can sin. How many of y'all agree with that? Or how many think he died so now I can really drop it like it's hot? If you're that older, lay it down like it's warm. <laughs> and then, and then, and then, and then, and then, okay. And then I'm just going to forget it. And I'm going to be okay because I believe in Jesus. No, you may, you may believe he's the son of God, but you really haven't received. I'm going to show you. I know because I'm, I'm, I'm dealing with some people's salvation now. They, oh, Jesus. But, I, but I'm not going to lie to you. And, and I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to lie to you. And, and I, I'm, not gonna, I'm not going to uh, pretend like, okay, let me just give you the scripture. Let me just give you the scripture because, because Romans is amazing. And so, and so if we've been buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should walk in the newness of life. He said, even so, we should walk in the newness of life. Verse 5, if, if we should walk in the newness of life, why, I said, Lord, why did you put we should walk in the newness of life? He said, you can't, read, you can't have verse 4 without verse 5. See, if you see, what does verse 5 start with? Four. So verse five is a continuation of verse five is a continuation of verse four. Four, because verse five now is now answering verse four. We should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, then we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. Can I break this down for you? Someone say, break it down. If I've been planted together in the likeness of his death, see, born again, I believed in him, I believe, and, 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 and I will follow him, I will trust him, I, I died to my old self. I died to my old BS. What? He just, belief system. I died to my old belief system, and now I'm going to follow him. Why? Because I believe in him. But if I don't follow him, it's because I don't believe in him. Oh, Jesus. See, I, the reason I follow him is because I believe in him. And so now I'm born again. Got it? Okay, so now, so now I'm like him. I'm planted together, so right there in his death, I died to myself. I died to myself. Now, watch this. Watch this. You ready for this? And if I died together in the likeness of his death, then I shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. What do you mean? Do you remember after he raised, he raised from the dead? Do you remember after he raised up three days later? What happened? You ready for this? He went to the same people that he was with three days before that. And they couldn't recognize him. Let me tell you, you know when you got saved? And they said, there's something different about you. It's like you're glowing. And I ain't a woman and I ain't pregnant. But there's something different about you. I got saved. But baby, if you know you did was pray a prayer, and then you go back and you look just like them, 
Did you really receive the light of the world? Did you really receive the gift of him who? Jesus. He said, because if you received him, then a booby trap, see, if oh, Jesus, when you really receive, a booby trap went off of your flesh. A button and, and, and some of the desires that you, you just don't want to do it no more. Amen. Why don't you drink no more? I don't want to. Yeah. Come on, I know Christians that drink. I ain't other Christians. Yes, Come on, I know what happened to me. Yes, Why well, no Christians? No, no, see, no, see, I received the light of the world. Yes, How can I receive him and still look like that? I died. How can I die and resurrect and look the same? Goodness. Jesus didn't even do it. Are y'all are y'all seeing that? I'm fixing to, I'm finna hit y'all the scripture. I've never I have read Romans I don't know how many times. I told I just told you the date I've been saved. I've got stacks of journals. That's what I do. This, this is my personal, I'm preaching to you out of my personal journal. And I write down the scriptures that one time I almost wrote the whole Bible. Because I didn't know anything. So anything that wows me. Anything that instructs me, anything that teaches me, anything that corrects me, I write out the whole verse. And then I write out everything else that the Holy Spirit ministered to me on that scripture. Because that's how I learn. I'm, I'm not like some of y'all. Y'all learn real quick. It takes me a second. But I want to learn. Are you ready for this? You see, he was the very people that he lived with for years. Three days later, couldn't recognize him. See, when you got saved and you come back around some of them old folk, they shouldn't be able to recognize you. How come you don't want to do this? I got saved. Behold, you are a new creation. Old things have passed away. Baby, I'm new. T t tell your neighbor, go ahead and touch me. I don't know the next time you're going to sit next to someone this fresh. Again. Uh, I don't know the next time you're going to sit next to someone this fresh. Go ahead and touch me. I don't know the next time you're going to sit next to someone this fresh. But I'm new. I'm fresh out the box. I'm new. Come on, someone shout, I'm new. I'm fresh out the box. I got a fresh favor, a fresh favor flowing on me right now to overcome those things that try to hold me down, that try to hold me back. I'm fresh. So fresh and so clean, clean. Uh, verse 10, chapter 6, verse 10. Are y'all getting this? Am I proving my point yet? If not, I'm really going to hit you in a minute. Uh, chapter 6, verse 10 and 11. For, uh, give me the New King James just because that's how I have it in, in, my, in my journal right here. New King James, please, sir. Or man, who's, who's doing it? Sir. For the death that he died. He died to sin once for all, but the life that he lives, he lives to God. See, so, so watch this. Oh, my. Uh, look, see, <laughs> y'all know how hard that was for me. Yesterday was leg day. Y'all got to know I'm stirred up because yesterday was leg day, and I just high-stepped it. I'm feeling it right now. <laughs> so, For the, watch, the death that he died. Now, come on, Jesus. Someone say, I'm Christ-like. Christ the death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life that he lives, he lives to God. Hold on, I'm not even going to go to the next verse yet. Because what I need you to know, see, see, a divine favor is... Working on your behalf right now. Reina. Amen. Her who reigns. Oh, Jesus. Right? Huh? Right? She who reigns. Come on. Reina. <laughs> Reina. 
Let me see if I can get back in this. <laughs> what was that? And like a, a mouse sneezed. <laughs> okay, so, Reina, you have to know that there's a divine favor working that, that went off in me when you got saved. And it killed sin in your life. You didn't have to do anything. You got to say, it, it chopped his head off. Now, you can live your life for God. What you've been wanting to do. Come on, someone say, what I've been wanting to do, I can do now. I can live for God. Sin has been assassinated in my life. Look, I'm out of time. Can y'all give me a little bit so I can just, uh, let me break this down. Can I finish breaking this down then I'll let you go. Okay. Let me, let me, so now go to verse 11 because yeah, that's Jesus. Okay. Y'all, y'all started off. We can stop right there. But let's make it personal. Instead of you. Me. Okay, now read. Tell your neighbor, we just went country. Now tell the person behind you, I reckon I'm dead to sin. I reckon, I reckon we just went country. I guess that's why God gave us cowboyaddiction.com. We just went <laughs> I reckon, I reckon I'm dead to sin. Come on, come on. Yes, sir. Somebody say that. I reckon I'm dead to sin. Mark, you didn't say it. Let's wait for Mark. Ready, Mark? Go. <laughs> okay. Okay. I, no, see, see, he said, you consider yourself. Think yourself. Meditate yourself, see yourself, speak yourself. I'm dead to sin. But see, if I really didn't receive the gift of Jesus, I will still embrace sin. See, I'm not saying you're not going to fall. No, that's not what I'm saying. You, you probably were going to make mistakes. If anyone in here is perfect, raise your hand because we just met Jesus. But what, see, you're still going to make mistakes. But th there's not an embracement of it. You see what I'm saying? You're, you're, you're not like. But what he, what he said, he said, I need you to reckon yourself. Think yourself. I'm dead to sin. Likewise, you also consider yourself. Reck that word, I think the right word, right, the King James is consider. Am I right? I don't think it's reckon, is it? Isn't it consider? It's reckon also? I think about the, the word is uh, consider. Reckon yourself. I'm dead indeed. I'm dead indeed. Oh, Jesus. I'm dead indeed to sin. But I'm alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. For what? So I can live for him. I got a favor. That I can live for God. And Kim is going to be easy. See, everyone told you, oh, it's too hard to be a Christian. No, it's because they didn't reckon themselves dead. You, you got to, uh, I'm dead to sin. I'm dead to that. You want to do this? I'm dead to that. No need for you to go and resurrect it. Because you have the power to. Oh, Jesus. Okay, let me keep going because I'm trying to finish this. I'm trying to get to the end of this. Uh, verse 12. So I'm going to go 12 through 14. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body that you should obey its lust. 13. Neither yield your members. Oh, hold on. I think I do want to go King James, Dylan. 
I think I do want to go King James on this one. Goods and members, instruments. Uh, maybe go back. I'm sorry. Don't pay attention to me. New King James. So do not present. Yeah, I was right. Why didn't I see? Why didn't I see that? Do not present your members or your body. Do not present your body as instruments of unrighteousness to sin. But present yourself to God as being alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. Now hold on before I read that. Do not present. You were given with a present of salvation. So now the proper response, I think the Bible says the least you can do is offer up your body as a sacrifice. So God gave his son to you as a present. He says, so now what you can do is pre- give him a present. Ta-da! Come on, everybody say, ta-da! ta-da. See, so every time I, I, I yield to sin... I'm giving sin a present. Let's just read it. Do not present your members or your body as an instrument of unrighteousness to sin. But present yourself to God. I'm giving you a present, Lord. I'm showing you I'm alive in you, Jesus wasn't wasted in my life. He's alive in me. His sacrifice wasn't in vain in my life. He's alive in me. Are y'all seeing this? Jesus, man. You see, I will not give sin a present. I'm going to give God a present. My life, alive in him. My, okay, G, okay, my. Verse 14, here it is. Watch this. For sin shall not have dominion over you. Why? Because you're not under the law. You're under grace. What? Not, I'm not going to, write this down. I'm not going to present my body to sin, but I'm going to present my body to God as an instrument because I'm under grace. Did y'all get that? You mean to read that again? I'm not going to present my body to sin, but I'm going to present my body to God as an instrument. Use me, Lord. Because I'm under grace. Because I'm under grace, I won't sin. Not because I'm under grace, I get to sin. No, see, it's because I'm under grace, I won't sin. Are y'all getting this? Not, oh, I'm under grace, I get to sin now. No, 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 no. For sin shall not have dominion over you. Why? Because I'm under grace. So I'm not going to present, I'm not going to give sin a present. Me. Why? I'm under grace. I got a divine favor working in my life. I don't have to yield to that. Are y'all seeing this? I, I, I didn't. I didn't get to where I wanted to get. But let me just give you Romans one fourteen last scripture, and I'll close, and then I'll pick up here next week. Okay. I'll pick up here next week. Romans 1, 14. Okay, that wasn't it. Romans 1, 4, I'm sorry. Romans 1, 4. G, 
Jesus declared to be the Son of God with power. With power, right? According to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection of the dead. He was declared to be the Son of God with power. He was declared to be the Son of God with power according to in harmony with the spirit of holiness. Holiness, sanctification, breeds power. The reason the church is lacking the power that she used to have is because there's so much excuse for sin now and, and licensing sin. And the reason we don't see the power like we used to it is because of a lack of holiness. I'm talking to I'm, this church. We we need to, Pastor. But Pastor, we man, we we man, I, I think we got it going on. We we I, I ain't never seen some of the stuff going on here like we see in other churches. Well, other churches don't have the call that we have, and the power that that is supposed to be flowing in this church, we we're gonna have to increase in holiness. And, and Saint, I know you don't hear it a lot, but, but Jesus was declared to be the Son of God, but with power, with evidence. Why? It was in accordance with the spirit of holiness. There was some holiness. There was, I've been set apart for an assignment. At the beginning of Romans 1, the Apostle Paul said, I was set apart for an assignment. God set me apart. Come on, I, but I need you to know God set you apart. He's trying to set you apart for an assignment. You, daughter, you, son, have an assignment on this earth that God is looking for vessels that will not yield to sin, but that will yield to righteousness. That he can use to minister his power to people that are in need. And if you read uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2, he can't use dirty vessels. He said you got to be a, a vessel of honor, ready and available for the master's use. He said, there, he said now in the house there are vessels of honor, there's vessels of dishonor. He said, cleanse yourself from the latter. Cleanse yourself from dishonor so that you can be able and available for the master's use. Are y'all seeing this? We got to bring back holiness in the church. Sanctification. Dedication. Consecration. Well, everybody else does it. I'm not everybody else. I don't have everybody else's call on my life. I got the call that God put on my life. And that he put on the mandate that he put on this church. And the things that he told me were going to transpire and take place in this sanctuary. I've had people that, 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 that really don't know me come up to me and just, uh, uh, I, can I tell you what I saw? What did you see? I saw oil coming. I'm t can, I, can I talk to you real quick? I know I said I let you go. I saw oil. He just sat here in amazement. He said, I see oil coming out of the, what is that, trim? The molding, and it's traveling, and it's dripping on that altar. He said, I see a lightning over you as you walk. And then one other lady that's flowing up the fetish, she said, I saw, she said, there are many miracles that are going to take place in your sanctuary. She said, big miracles. Miracles that you ain't, you ain't going to be able to explain. She said, I see there's going to be so many of them. I can't, I've done lost count, what we were trying to count. But I know he's not finished yet. God is not finished yet. And we, we can't be letting the enemy make room. We can't be offering ourselves as a present to sin. I got to offer myself as a present to God. Because not only that, you see, Jesus, you see, there's a power that comes with holiness. There's a power. He said he's a son with power. Why? A spirit of holiness. 
Somebody say holiness. And see, when you walk in holiness, that's why Jesus has a confidence he has. Because can, come, can we be real? How many know sin sucks the confidence out of you? Don't lie. Don't, don't sit up here now. You can know all the scriptures you want. But, but you know when we let sin in our life, it sucks the confidence out. We lose confidence in ourselves, in our faith. Right? We've all been there. Let's not act perfect. For, for, let's not act real holy. And you and I need expanded confidence in the word. Because when you have expanded confidence in the word, you can catch the enemy off guard. Because when you have expanded confidence in the word, you can hit your target from far out. I was telling you, I was telling you, that there, there, there are some uh, basketball players like Stephen Curry. He don't need to go up to the goal where all the defense is at. I'll shoot it from out here. Sweet. What? You ain't ever expecting me. You see, we always, oh, you got to watch the enemy. He's sneaky. Yeah, well, I'm sneaky too. And I'll catch you where you ain't looking. Well, I'll catch you where you weren't. You were you expecting this situation to get me off. But let me show you something. Got him. Tell your neighbor, got him. Come on, tell your neighbor, I got a divine favor. Got him. See, you're going to have to get this expanded confidence in the word of God that you can hit the goal from far out. And that's what sanctification and holiness does. It puts a power in you where you can accomplish some things you weren't ever able to accomplish before. It's a separation. That's why I, there's, there's some places I just won't go. There's some people I just won't go around unless it's ministry purpose, ministry driven. I'm just not going to go chill with certain people. I ain't going to do it. I got to protect the anointing that's in me. You see what I'm saying? Once again, if it's ministry driven, that's different. Because you got know you got something special on the inside of you that the enemy's after. Amen? We'll pick this up next week. We'll pick this up next week. I'm going to show you how to hit the goal from far out, how, how to present your body. See, because we don't talk about that a lot. But the Bible talks about it a lot in the New Testament. Oh, you get to, no, it's because I'm under grace, I'll present my body. That's what Apostle Paul said in Romans. Because I'm under grace, I'm going to present my body. Isn't that good? I'm going to teach you how to strengthen. Strengthen yourself. Can, 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 huh? You're going to be sitting there, I'm going to be out there. You catch on, catch on line. I know. <laughs> we we, we, we got to get this because, it, l l l listen, 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 listen. If you are constantly feeding your old man, you can't really expect him to submit to the new you. See, if you're constantly feeding your old desires, you can't really expect them to submit to the spirit. So you're going to have to quit feeding it. Amen. Well, can we pick this up next week? How many of y'all are going to be back next week? Amen. Amen. Oh, we're going to get this next week. And we're going to more. Listen, you're going you're, you're gonna to live long and you're going to live strong. And when the enemy tries to stop you, he ain't going to be able to stop you again. Why? Holiness. Spirit of holiness. Spirit of holiness flows with a new, a different power that your average Christian don't flow with. That's how I did, I did, God didn't call me to raise average. God didn't call me to raise ordinary. Amen. I found out it takes one thing, one word to be extraordinary. Do something extra. Go one mile further than where everyone else would go.